Hi there. So Mary sent me a link to a question that Jordan Peterson takes during one of his lectures. Um, I'm not sure if it's biblical or 12 rules, but I don't think it matters. What matters is he addresses Zen and the art of motorcycle maintenance and specifically quality. So thanks a lot to Mary Kohan for sending me this. Also, the other day I commented on a video interview that John Verveke had with Eric Torenberg of Village Global, and it turns out Eric, who I've been in contact with, is a big Piercig fan and has written two beautiful synopses of Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance and of Lila uh, as Quora responses to questions about those books. So I'm going to cheat in this video and use um, part, of, uh, uh, part of his synopsis of Lila to, to get some material I need for this video. So that's to say that what he's written is very useful and I encourage you to read his essays. I'm going to put a link below. They're, they would be helpful in, um, in understanding the books if you haven't read them and understanding some of what I'm saying in these videos. So I'm going to play a little bit of Jordan Peterson, which I haven't in a long time. Now, this young man told me that his life lacked purpose and direction and meaning and that he was nihilistic until he started... He read Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, which is a book I actually like quite a bit. I've read it three times at different decades of my life. Okay, so he read Zen and, Art and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance at three different decades of his life. And this is kind of what I was saying in the last video about Zen being a sacred text for me. It's not, um, it's something that you can go back to again and again, a book like this. And it's not at all surprising that he emphasized the time between the readings, because this book will very likely speak to you at different uh stages of your life and as some good examples if you're young it'll give you the sense that there is some kind of meaning and purpose uh, if you are, have that uh, youthful you know uh, nihilism which this fellow that Jordan is referring to had and it's not uncommon especially these days so it, it is good because it gives you a sense that there are things that are better and that you can have a purpose in exploring those better things, whatever it is. In the case of um, Phaedrus, it was his philosophy, and with the narrator, it's motorcycle maintenance, for example. Um, as a young adult, or as a, a midlife, maybe, as an as a older person, um, in your 40s or something, you can, as an example, go to the Gumption Chautauqua in chapter 26 and avoid some of those traps that keep you from seeing quality, the gumption and the, uh, the ego and the uh, value traps, for example, and, and ways that keep you from gumption, from the flow state, from getting into your work, you know, in your career. And as an older person, you know, for as I um, enter my mid-50s, this book speaks to me as a philosophy of life, how to live life in general. It is a spiritual text at this point, and spirituality at this point in my life, and I don't think that's uncommon for someone my age, and I'm certainly the age uh, more or less that, um, that Jung would say you, you look back at your life and you formulate the way you're going to live the rest of your life. So spirituality is... Um, I hate that word, but you know what I'm saying. A, a philosophical approach to life is how I see Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance now. And one of the things that's very interesting about that book is that it's an examination of the idea of quality, of the idea that there are qualitative distinctions between things and that we have an instinct to make qualitative distinctions. And so a qualitative distinction is simply, this is better than that, which is a judgment. Yes, we are driven by quality. We are driven by what's better. Um, quality creates us and our world. Every last bit of it, says Piercig. The impulse toward the good is what keeps the machine called the universe running. Okay, now what Ratzinger is hypothesizing is that the person in and up, you know how you're, 
the idea, the modern idea is you're supposed to accept yourself. I think that's an insane idea, by the way. Really, I think, I can't think of a more nihilistic idea than that you're already okay. It's like, no, you're not. And the reason you're not is because you could be way more than you are. So what do you want to be? You want to be okay as you are? Or do you want to strive towards what's better? And this young man, this Australian, he said that the reason that Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance had such an impact on him was because he wasn't happy with his current mode of being, right? He didn't consider the manner in which he conducted himself sufficient. And the fact that the author of Zen, and it was Persig, laid out the notion that you could make qualitative distinctions and there, there really was a difference between good things and bad things or great things and evil things. It gives you direction. It gives you, gives you the possibility of moving upward. And, and Ratzinger is pointing out, at least to some degree, that human beings are insufficient in and of themselves and need the movement upward. And so they need to conceptualize something like the highest good. So there's a phrase he uses here that there are qualitative judgments between things. Now, does that sound like a phrase out of metaphysics equality? I don't think so because it's not exactly the right language. I think we'd have to say some static patterns of value are higher quality than others because once they're things, they're already conceptualized. They're no longer pre-intellectual. It's, it's not dynamic quality anymore so but there are um, static patterns of value that are higher quality than others and that are more enduring and Peterson wants us to see value in some of those more enduring patterns um, this is why he gets labeled as conservative in certain circles why he is seen as a religious person in certain circles certainly not a bad thing and then to strive for that. And the thing is, is that there isn't any difference between conceptualizing the good and being judged. Because if you're going to conceptualize the good and move towards it, what you have to do is separate from yourself all those things that aren't good and leave them behind. And that's why the Redeemer and the Judge are the same thing. So here's another example where the language is, is different from the metaphysics of quality, where we get away from quality, the dynamic, you know, the, the dynamic of quality, the pre-intellectual awareness of quality, and into the static patterns of value. There are good things and bad things, and he's used the phrase conceptualization. The quality manifests in static patterns of value in things, but the highest good quality can't be conceptualized. In terms of piercing, it's more important um, to be able to detect quality ongoing as you go through, you know, moment to moment, detecting quality and being able to manifest that than it is to aim for a representational good, such as the sovereign individual or let's just say the imitation of Christ or for that matter, to be the Zen sage. The highest good isn't a thing in the world that you're trying to get. The highest good is being able to connect with your natural, let's just say God-given, capacity to recognize the good and to be honest in your assessment of that recognition. So I hope that makes sense. So... Peterson is talking about the two things at once, dynamic quality and a high quality patterns of value and conflating them a little, I think. Um, it's understandable and it's not a problem for Peterson. It's only a problem if you're looking at it through, a Pier through Piercing's lens. The movement upwards is dynamic quality guiding you on the track of quality and that is the highest good, the actual relationship with quality, the guiding itself. In the metaphysics of quality, the, the highest good is not being more like Christ. However, you could say, um, I am a Christian, and in my boxcars, in my train as a Christian, um, what is in those boxcars guide me on the track of quality to be more Christ-like. So you, you see the difference? The sovereign individual is a very high-quality social pattern but it is not the highest good to aim to be the sovereign individual as a, as a matter of course, although it could be for you. And one of the things that's really appalling, I think, about our modern world is that 
we're rejecting the notion of qualitative distinctions. You say, well, we don't want to hurt anybody's feelings by saying that one thing is better than another. It's like, okay, fair enough. It's not fun to be cast off with the damned. That's for sure. But if people are, in fact, insufficient in, in, the, in their present condition, which seems to be the case, I mean, try finding someone who isn't, then if you deny the possibility of qualitative distinction because you want to promote a radical egalitarianism, then you remove the possibility of redemption because there's no movement towards the good. And it seems to me that it's a catastrophe to sacrifice the good for... Well, it's a catastrophe to sacrifice the good for the equal. Okay, the way that morality is conceptualized in Lila is um, a rather a chore uh, to figure out. And in my next iteration of this channel, you know, as we move away from Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, that's not going to be anytime soon, and toward Lila, and I, I sometimes, of course, uh, reference Lila anyway because um, it's part of the project. But as we move towards um, Lila, we're going to see that basically there are, at this point in history at least, four evolved levels of static patterns of value. There's inorganic, which is like the laws of nature. Um, there's biological, which is sex, satiation, law of the jungle. There's social, which is societal laws, manners, and mores. And then there's the intellectual, which is the human brain's rational and creative capacity to express quality. And it's um, the intellectual level is like ideas. So basically, very basically, in the metaphysics of quality, the lower level, let's just say inorganic, supports the emergence of the next level, say biological. And the lower level then, in general, needs to defer to the evolved level. If it can't impinge upon it, if it impinges upon it, that is um, that is immoral. That is the metaphysics of quality definition of immoral is when uh, the lower level takes predominance over the level above it. And so, so when a great thinker's ideas, and this is this is from Eric's. Um, Eric's uh, synopsis. Say, say a great thinker's ideas, uh, the intellectual ideas, say Copernicus or Galileo, say those ideas are muzzled by society, which is social, which is a level below. This is an immoral act, and you can actually see how this kind of immorality actually plays out in the world in a coherent way. Um, and most people think that, for example, in the revolutions of the 60s and 70s, there was benefit because you actually were able to finally uh, declare in society and intellectually that all people were equal, regardless of sex and race and all that stuff. So the 60s and 70s had great benefit to society, but it's gone too far. And um, Peterson thinks it's gone too far. A lot of us thinks, think it's gone too far. And Piersig thought it went too far, too. So here's the quote um, that was in uh, Eric's summary of Lila. Very good quote. It's a mixture of Piersig and, uh, and Eric. This has been a century of fantastic intellectual growth and fantastic social destruction, he remarks. Piersig remarks. The causes of this fantastic social destruction are not hard to find. 1960s hippies have upheld the values of biology at the expense of the social, lower level, impinging on an upper level. The intellectual pattern of amoral objectivity is to blame for the social deterioration of America because it has undermined the static social values necessary to prevent deterioration. So that sort of... Um, that's confusing, and I'm not going to analyze that because I don't know enough about the nuances of how morality is in here. What, what I'm just trying to show you right now is that, that uh, Pearson agreed with this. In its condemnation of social repression as the enemy of liberty, it has never come forth with a single moral principle that distinguishes a Galileo fighting social repression from a common criminal fighting social repression. It has, as a result, been the champion of both. That's the root of the problem. So again, this is to demonstrate Piercig's view on this exact subject, that uh, we are going too far. 
So I'm still a big fan of Peterson, and, and studying his work so diligently for a couple of years continues to impact me. However, I have some of a divergence in applying his worldview because, uh, well, there's certain things, like to tell the truth, there's certain things that he says and that, that are just always, they're, per, they're perennial, basic, substrate of existence ideas, like to always align yourself with truth or, on, or, or authenticity. That's a perennial given. But some of his stuff is too directive. And um, that's not really consonant with Piercig in my view at this point. Um, and Piercig is the worldview that I want to live by. And I think the divergent, um, and I think my divergence with Peterson and with Christianity, even though I would say that I still consider myself, you know, at least culturally and even more than culturally a Christian, um, it's the answer in Christianity is not is not quality, but an orientation towards static patterns of value, towards an imitation of Christ. And for Peterson, um, a lot of the way to be in the world has directives like the Twelve Rules. And so the answer for me really is a um, is 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 quality. And the ability to recognize and manifest quality in the world in the right way, meaning as close to the actual pre-intellectual experience of quality as I can muster in its manifestation. This, by the way, is not incompatible with a belief in God. So I hope that made sense, and I will see you next time. <laughs>